Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Psalms. Psalm 34. Father God, we thank you for your word this morning. Holy Spirit, as you feed us, as you teach us, as you give instructions. Open up our hearts and our minds to receive great from you this morning. And as you teach us, give us line upon line, as you always do, precept upon precept, rightly dividing our word of truth in our hearts and our minds, O oh God. Give us your spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you, Father. Uh, your word as we, as we read and as we eat this morning. And Father God, teach us about us, our, our adversary, the devil, how to keep him on our feet, Father God. Illuminate your words, Father God, and give us great understanding. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Psalm 34, reading verse 19. Ready, read. Many, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them. Amen. One more time. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers out of them all. Amen. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. So, know for sure afflictions are going to come, but our surety is that God will truly deliver us out of them all. So whatever troubles might come, know for sure that God will truly deliver his children out of them all. So there's no need for us to be fearful of anything because God cannot lie. If he say he delivers us out of them all, then truly he will deliver us out of them all. As they come, everyone will be delivered out of. So there's no need for us to feel fearful in life or live a life being worried. And most of our worries come if, it were, if it's not for being uh, fearful or afraid for our children that something might happen to them or our parents even ourselves, and also financially, monies. Wanting to know if we can have enough to do this and to do that. So there's always something that we tend to be fearful about or tell, we tend to worry about. But if we give them to Jesus, if we give them to God, then we don't have to worry about them. So we have to get to a place where we know that no matter what happens, no matter what come, God have us. He will deliver us. He will keep us. He will sustain us. So there's no need to worry or to be afraid about anything at all. But whenever we open a door to Satan, when afflictions do come, when troubles do come, when trials do come, and we open up that door and we start to waver on God's word and his promises, then we tend to see, or not to see, I should say, the affliction go away, or the troubles feel as though it's gotten bigger when we take our eyes off of the word. So we must not give agreement to Satan, to the enemy, when afflictions, trials, temptations, troubles come. Do not Take your eyes off of the word. In other words, we know what God has promised us in his word. So we all hold on to the promise and we bring them to God. We bring them to God and we only stand on what we know. In other words, we stand on what we believe in the word of God. So as temptations and trials come, we have a God that will deliver us out of them all. If we continue to stand, if we continue to trust him, if we continue to believe. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered him out of them all. So there's no place or there should be no place for us to feel God cannot do it. Or God will not deliver us. Or God will not fix the situation. Or God will not make things happen for our children or our grandchildren, or even for us. So if there is something that is pressing you today, believe that God will deliver you out of it. Believe that he has you. Believe that there is truly a way where there might look like there's no way. See, God sees everything. 
But we have to get to the place where we see everything how he sees it. Why? Because we are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So we live in the earth in an earthen vessel. But it says that we are seated in heavenly places in Christ. That's our spirit that is joined to Christ. And so we have to know that all things are under our feet. And the sun might be shining today, but we must trust God that the sun will shine tomorrow. Or the sun will shine this afternoon. Or the sun will shine an hour from now. But we have to have that strong belief in our Father. In our Redeemer that look at God. I hold on to you because I don't have nothing else. I hold on to you because I have no one else. I only have you and God. If you don't do it, who's going to do it? I have no one else. But when we start to look to self, when we start to look to people, when we start to look to the finances, the monies, then we take our eyes off of the word. We take our eyes out of the word. The word is Christ. The word is God. So to stay grounded in God, we must have the word in us. Our body is the temple of the Most High God. We already have a spirit living in us, our own spirit. But we invited the Holy Spirit to come and take up residence when we became born again. So in our earthen vessel, we have Holy Ghost in us. So we are never alone. And so we have to stay in, in fellowship. We must stay in agreement with God and his word to know that my God will never leave me. My God will never fail me. My God will lift me up out of any situation I go through. If I drop to the bottom, well, I don't have to worry about that. I'm not going to stay there because God is going to lift me back up. You know, we, we are afraid to fall. We are afraid to lose things. But let me tell you something. In God, you can't lose. In God, you cannot fall. In God, you cannot fail. If you only believe, believe that God can take you to the mountaintop and keep you there. Believe that God can take your children to the mountaintop and do what his word says. Know what his word says about, your, about you and about your children. The seed of the righteous shall be safe. The seed of the righteous shall be mighty upon the earth. That's a promise to our children. As saints of God, as children of the Most High God, it says our children will be mighty upon the earth. So you don't have to worry about your child failing in life. Go they may, but come they must. If you're praying over them, if you're standing in the gap for them before God, they can't help but fail. You say, say that. You got them this minute, but you ain't going to have them in the next hour. You ain't going to have them come tomorrow. Their life has been promised to God, given to God, and they will serve my Jesus. That's for us to proclaim. That's for us to believe. So Satan might have them today, this minute, this second, but you say, uh-uh. I have already given them to God. That's God's property. That body is God's vessel. But it's for us to open our mouth. It's for us to not look at what they're doing. It's for us to look through the eyes of Christ and see their end. Yes. See their end. That's just a little bump in the road for them right now. But you have to make sure, we have to make sure that we're standing in the gap for them and we are praying to God for them don't give up on the family don't give up on the family suck your teeth and say man the hell with them no we can't do that because God need the righteous to pray yes. God need us to pray but we have to believe that the prayers that we're giving to God God will answer Psalm 35 let's read verse 1 Right underneath that, ready, read. Plead my cause, O Lord, with them that strive with me. Fight against them that fight against me. One more time. Plead my cause, O Lord, with them that strive with me. Fight against them that fight against me. So when we come to our God and we're going through, we have to find the right prayers to pray. We don't go and start to fuss and cuss out people. We cannot now go and start to judge them. We go to the righteous judge who is God, the Lord God. 
Almighty and say, God, plead my case. Plead my case. When the boss rises up against you, they won't give you what's just for you. Plead my case, oh God. Fight against them that fight against me. Strive with them that strive with me. This is what we have to do. We have to take control. Satan only gain ground over them who don't know what to do. But us being God's children, we have a sword. That sword is the word. But that sword is also a sword in the spirit realm that is used to defeat the enemy, Satan, the kingdom of darkness. It is not just the word. The word of God said it cuts and it heals. So if the word could cut, then that got to be a real sharp sword, eh? So we have to see for what it is. It is a sword. So when we come in against Satan, we come with a sword. The sword is the word. We don't sit back and cry and say, oh, Jesus, Lord, the end is the end. It's the end. If you proclaim it's the end, if you declare it's the end, it will be the end. So when we come to God, plead my cause, oh, Lord, and you stand. This is a prayer I pray. Father God, strive for them that strive for me. Fight against them that fight against me. That's the prayer I pray. I've learned to pray that and I pray that. Fight against them that fight against me. Contend for them that contend against me. This is my prayer. This is a prayer that I pray. Many are the afflictions. That means it ain't going to stop. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. It ain't say you first three years going to be sweet. But the next 50 years? No. This is a daily walk. So it's a daily walk that your enemies out there trying to get you. Trying to get me. So when we come before our maker, our God, our savior. We come with the word. But we also come with boldness and authority to shut down our enemy before he start his attack on us. So for us, we need to prepare our day. We need to prepare our day by speaking. Speaking success, speaking blessing, speaking pros prosperity over it. So before we start our day, we go to the door and we start. We first thing we must do is start preparing, not by putting on clothes or showering or bathing and getting ready to go to work. That's not how we prepare for our day. That's how we prepare to go to work or school or to go run errands. But for us to prepare our day, we must speak. We start our day by praying. We start our day by speaking. That's preparing your day for your day to be successful, for your day to be blessed, for your day to be prosperous. So we have to make sure every blessed day that God has given to us, it is a blessed day. God didn't give us no bad days. Everything comes from God is good. When he spoke the world into being, when he spoke it out of, the, out of the spiritual realm into existence, into the earth, he only spoke. But he spoke what he saw in heaven or what was in the spiritual realm. When he said, let there be light, then he knew what light was already from the water, eh? Let there be light. So he knew what light was. So when we speak, we must speak success, blessings, and prosperity over our whole day. We get to speak, pray, declare, decree our day how we want it. Because if we leave it open, it's a blank canvas for the devil to play on. It's a blank canvas. So he come and he take his black marker. And he start to speak. Okay, God, but they ain't clear nothing on this day. I gonna send that lying spirit. I gonna send that thief in spirit. I gonna send that murdering spirit. And I gonna jack up their day to day. Mm -hmm. And this is what happened when we do not take control. See, God said to man, Adam, Adam, we are Adam. Adam is man. 
And God said to man, have dominion. He didn't tell Satan have dominion. He said, have dominion over the works of my hands. Over the works of my hands. So you speak over the works of God's hands. You have dominion over your day. The day came from God. He allowed you to have that day. He blessed you with another day. So what is it that you're speaking and preparing for this day? What have you spoken, declare, and decree for tomorrow? For Tuesday, for Wednesday, for Thursday, for Friday, for Saturday. We have another week, brand new. This is the first day. So what are you speaking? Are you speaking blessings? Are you speaking success? Are you speaking prosperity? Or are you just waiting until tomorrow comes? And so if you wait till tomorrow comes, Satan already ahead of you. He's already ahead of you. He's already before God, what? Being the accuser of the brethren. So, this is the reason why, thank you, Holy Spirit, yes. our lives are predestined. Come on. So, if our lives are predestined, how could it get jacked up? Come on. It only could get, it only could get jacked up if you are not taking authority. If you're not having dominion, well, it is what it is. How it, how is it is what it is if you have authority? It cannot be what it is. You see something but don't look good and you go in agreement with it. So Satan said, okay, God, they say it is what it is. Well, this they going to be a Black Friday for them today. Oh, they're going to holler and they're going to wear today. They're going to holler and they're going to wear because they're going to lose their job. Their child going to get knocked down. This going to happen and they, all of their money going to Oh, I'm going to teach every penny from them. Wow. See, we have the control. But when we don't take control, we leave it open. And only one person we leave it open to. It's a spirit. His name is Satan. Wow. So when we do not prepare for our day by speaking, by praying, by declaring, by taking authority over it, speaking blessings over it, speaking success over it, speaking prosperity over it, then we leave it open for the enemy. Satan will hijack it. He'll destroy it. If you don't move to take control first. See, you have to take control first. Why? Your life has been predestinated. Mm. That means it is destined to succeed. It is destined to be prosperous. It is destined to be blessed as a child of God. Because God went after we gave our life to Christ and we became born again. God went and he wiped out, forgiven, canceled all of the ordinance. All of the curses, in other words, that were speaking, were speaking to us or against us. And so he said he took it out of the way. Nailing it to the cross of Jesus Christ. So now we are back. If we know how to call it back, God. Restore. Take me back to original before there was any sin. Show me. Teach me how to have dominion. Over the works of your hands. How to have dominion over my life. Show me how to take back my life from the enemy. Satan, hi Jack. Our days when we don't move to take control over it. When you declare, today is a great day. I am going to see the blessings of God come on me and run me down and overtake me. You are speaking what God said to speak. Say, have dominion. So when you speak, it's going to be a great day. Great day have to happen for you. You shut down the works of the enemy as a child of God. You are speaking into your day. And you are saying, come forth. Let this be a great day for me. Let my enemies be under my feet today. Let my hands prosper everything I touch. Let my day be smooth and beautiful. Let that problem what I had disappear today. You speak it. My child today will recognize God. 
he will, she will know that it is God who's working on their behalf. My child will serve God today. My child will give their life to Christ today. My child will rise above. No one will take advantage of her or him anymore. They will be empowered by God today. We speak. We speak. We declare. We proclaim. We decree. But we speak. We speak. We don't be silent. God only spoke good things. Everything that Jesus God wanted to manifest in this earth, it manifests and he said it was good. So you could declare, this is a good day for me. This is going to be a great day for me. I'm going to rise above my enemy today. Satan will not mess with nothing that belongs to me. I bind him out of every air of my life and I cast him out. I reject all sickness. I reject poverty because Jesus Christ became poor. That through his poverty I might be rich. I take my wealth and riches in my house today. I pray the blessings of God in my home over everyone is in there. And I declare wealth and riches shall be in my house because that's his word. So we have the opportunity to have great, amazing, awesome days, weeks and months and years. Not just for us, but for everyone that we decide to bring to God in prayers. So don't let the thief, Satan, come to kill, to steal, and to destroy your day. Your day. Move to take control of it first. Don't let Satan get you busy. Because the minute you wake up, a lot of time we wake up and say, on our mind, oh, this is my day, and I have to do this, and I have to do that. And I, 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 I. That's what a lot of most people wake up in the mornings. What they have to do. But what make you think you're going to live out that whole day to do that? Make you think God ain't going to say, answer for you. I mean, your life ends that day. No. We take the time and we speak into our day. We declare. We decree. We proclaim. Blessing, success, prosperity, health and healing, wealth and riches. You speak, I speak. So God says that he will deliver us out of all the afflictions. So whatever you might be going through today, know for sure deliverance have to come, provided you believe. So the troubles that you might be going through today, you speak an end to it. You have authority to speak an end to it. It ends today. Let, let the devil steal nothing from you, especially your time. Do not let the devil steal your time. I don't know if you ever go into a drive through Look here, and the many you, you, you know the drive through line no more, but yet you, you like that particular restaurant. And so you go and you join the line, you suck your teeth, you say, oh, I, this is the slowest line. This is the slowest line, and this time, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, you're still on the line, but you're still there. Satan still got 20, 30 minutes from you, just like that. But instead of saying, this is the slowest line, it's slow because you speak it. Lord, when I get to that line, let there be no cars, and let my food be hot and ready and prepared correctly. Bet you when you get there'll be no line. See, we get to speak. But we have to know what to speak. We need to stop speaking death and speaking curses. Stop speaking what you see with the natural eyes. And let's go into the word and let's just pull spirit now. Let's pull spirit. The word is spirit and it is life. The word is spirit and it is life. So let's pull spirit. But let's pull the right spirit and shut down the wrong spirit. We, we tend to think and we tend to act and we tend to pray from natural from the flesh. But our flesh is not born again. Our flesh cannot please God. So don't pray from the flesh. Pray from your spirit. Your spirit is joined to God's spirit. So therefore when you pray and you pray connected to the Holy Spirit, then you're only going to pray success, blessing, prosperity, health, riches, and only good things. But you pray from the spirit. You don't pray from, from your head. You don't pray for your mind. You pray from your spirit. Let your spirit pray. Let your spirit that is connected to God pray for you. So that you know what to pray, what to speak, what to declare, what to decree. 
so that your days, your years are blessed. They are beautiful days. They are amazing, fun-filled, joyful days that you really see God moving on your behalf. Speak. Don't stop speaking. Let God be a part of who you are. I, 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 there's no human being I talk to more than I speak to my Jesus. I talk to no one more than I talk to God. Honestly, there's no, I don't have conversations with no one longer than I have with God. And I love it. I enjoy our conversations. They are meaningful. And look, he's so smart and so wise, man. He just, he just bore me. I say, God, you're so smart. You're so smart, man. How you get so smart? And he make the simple, I mean, he just break it down to simplicity. He make what look like a mountain, just a speck of dust. I say, God, only you could do these kind of things. But for us to see him move like that, we must spend time with him. We must grow our relationship with him. We must believe his word. We must believe who he is. And he only want to help us. He only want to deliver us. He want he have the best for us. Our lives have been predestined. I, did. I choose to take the good. I choose to take the blessings. I choose, I choose to believe his word. I choose to believe that he can deliver me out of any and everything. Don't waver. Don't be doubtful. Don't waver. Don't be doubtful. He is God. Let him be God. Say, well, God, I am moving until you tell me move. Because, God, I have to trust you. You tell me. Christ is the man who put their trust in man. They flesh their arms. For he, what? Well, I'm not going to be a heath in the desert. I'm not going to not see when good come. No. So these are the things we have to stand on his word and say, God, I am like a tree planted by the rivers of water. That's who I am. That's who you have to start proclaiming. That's what the word of God say. Blessed is the man who put their trust in God. So when you put your trust in God, you are like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth fruit in his season. And leaves will never dry, never dry up. That's us. So when drought come, we don't have to fail. Because why? Our roots reach self-sustaining water in Christ. So we have to draw from the word. We have to allow our spirit to stay connected to God so that we get to see through his eyes. We get to believe his words because we know him, because we have relationship with him. So that when the trials, afflictions come, we know that it's only the short time. But we have to see the end. We have to see the end of paying rent. We have to see the rent of that small paycheck. We have to see the end of our children catching and, and, and generational curses on them. We have to see that come to an end. But we have to see it. Say, God, will I see this ending now? I see this ending now. I see this ending now. But you have to see it. And you speak seeing it until you physically see it. You remember the prophet? I think it was Elijah. When he prayed for no rain, and then when he's ready for rain to come, he prayed earnestly for rain to come. He sent a servant to say, do you see any rain? He said, nope. Went back to pray and pray and pray and pray and pray. And he sent a servant again, go, do you see any rain? Nope, no rain, not, not, no sign of no rain. Pray and pray and pray and pray and pray and pray and pray. And he went, he sent him again. But he sent him in faith in his God to know to look, I pray for rain so rain must come. And on the third time when he went and he sent him, he said, do you see? He said, I see a cloud so small as the size of a man's fist. He said, okay, that's it. Now he can say, now God, I didn't pray three times, what happened? A fist, what that could do? No. But his faith and trust was in the prayers and the God that he served can answer the prayers he prayed in faith believing. So we have to believe that no affliction, no problems, no stress, no dramas will come and stay forever or destroy us. When we do not take control, Satan truly will. So we have to just shut down Satan all the way and trust the word of God. Prepare for your days. Get in the habit of speaking. Jabez, we all know Jabez. Let's go to um, first. Chronicles. First Chronicles 4. First Chronicles chapter 4. Mm. 
9 and 10. We're going to read 9 and 10. Jabez was a man that knew God. You can read 9 for us. Jabez. That's First Chronicles 4, 9 and 10. Read in 9 first. Ready, read? And Jabez was more honorable than his brother, and his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bear him his sorrow. So Jabez had a curse on him from his mom named him. His mom called him sorrow. So he was attracted to sorrow. Everything about him and everything that he attracted was sorrowful because of his name. His and his mother called his name Jabez, saying, because I bear thee in sorrow. So she put a curse on him because of the pain that she went through when she bore him. And so she called him sorrow. Would you name your child sorrow? No. Let's read. But Jabez knew God, so he knew what to do. He got tired, or had to have gotten tired, of the life he was in, because look at what he prayed to God. Ready, read 10. And Jabez called on the Lord, saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me, and enlarge my coast, and that thy hand might be with me, and that thou wouldest that it may not grieve me and God granted him that which he requested Amen. and it says Jabez called on the God of Israel what he did prayed he spoke he came to God plead my cause O Lord plead my if you don't take the sorrow off of me God who so he said God move sorrow and bless me Move sorrow and bless me. Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, so he spoke, Oh, that thou would bless me. Indeed. But he said what he want and how he wanted to be blessed. He said, Oh, that thou would, first of all, bless me, not curse me, because a curse already on me. So I don't need a curse on me no more. Bless me. Indeed. And enlarge my coast. That means where I'm at is too small. Give me more. Enlarge my coast. And what he said? And that thine hand might be with me. So if God's hand is on you, how the devil's hand can be on you? Not anymore. And that thou wouldest keep me from evil. evil. Keep me from evil. And that it might, may not grieve me. And it says, God granted him his request. So you see what happened when we pray. When we pray, and we pray believing and trusting in God's word, then we get to see it manifest. For him to say, and God granted his request, and that means he had to have seen. And it means that God had to bless him indeed in largest coast, and kept his hands on him, and kept him from all evil that he didn't grieve him. So for him to say that God granted this request, that means everything he prayed, he had to have seen it. So when we pray to God, we pray believing like Jabez did, so that we get to see the manifestation of our prayers. Don't doubt. Don't doubt. Get the word of God and pray it. This prayer, I have prayed this prayer for many years. This is one prayer that I have written down in my prayer book that I pray from every morning. Every morning. I prepare my day in prayer and declaration. I declare that I'm going to have my day gets better and better, greater and greater, sweeter and sweeter. That's a declaration. That's the, one of the most recent I've put in there. But this Jabez prayers have been there for, yeah, for a while. Don't remember when I put that in there. But from I was a young Christian, I've learned to pray this prayer. Because whenever I pray this prayer, I see. I see it come to pass. 
And so every so often when I'm asking and looking for more from God, this prayer come to mind. And as the Holy Spirit put me in remembrance of this prayer that Jabez prayed, I pray the same prayer. And I don't change anything. I start off saying, oh Lord, bless me indeed. Enlarge my course. Keep thine. The only thing I put is keep thine hand on me that, uh, and keep me from all evil that it may not grieve me. I pray the same prayer. And whenever I pray this prayer, this prayer manifests in my life. So whenever you're looking for more, you're looking for change, you're looking for more blessings, this is one prayer that I pray. When things are not moving and look and examine your life, you go through your life. Have you moved in the last five years, 10 years, three years, two years? And if you say, yeah, I moved, how much did you move? How much? As our children, is my child moving? Are my children moving? How much have they moved since they graduated? Or how much, and if they've been graduated for a while, how much movement have they done in five years? Three years? Two years? It's on us to pay attention. Don't sit back. Year after year, and you're in the same position, then you're getting uncomfortable. Get a prayer that speaks to your situation because that he, many are the afflictions of the righteous. So if it's troubling you, then you are still in an affliction. You're still being afflicted, afflicted by the devil. So put an end to it and declare all, all afflictions. One year, two years, six months, three months, one month I've been in. I declare they finish and they didn't finish today, God. Bring me through them today, God. Bring me through them because your word says, the Lord delivers me out of them all. Your words say, no affliction is supposed to be on me. You will deliver me from them all. It don't say that this affliction is going to be three years, four days, one month. No, it don't say that. How long are we going to let this affliction come on us and stay on us? How long are we going to let the affliction trouble us? We don't have to. We don't have to. How long are we going to sit and say, God, I wait on God. You wait on God if when you don't bring that affliction to you, to answer him and say, now God, this, this thorn in my side got to go. This, this got to go. You know what it is. And if God say, a little bit longer, then you continue to thank him for bringing you out of it. But address it. Address it. Speak to it. Plead my cause, O oh Lord. It might just be that Satan is holding it because you don't know it's already been released. You have to know it's been released. Plead my cause, oh God. If he said finish, then you take finish and take nothing else. Well, God, you say this finish. God, you say finish, I take finish. Take finish. Don't let the devil keep that right there. You keep a noose around your neck when it ain't tight. And you're thinking you're strangling. You're being hung. When we pray, pray prayers that will move the hand of God. Oh, that thou would bless me indeed and enlarge my coast and that thine hand might be with me and that thou wouldst keep me from evil that it may not grieve me. And it's have that explanation mark. That means he prayed from his heart. He prayed, God, if you don't help me, if you don't help me, God, if you don't help me, God. See, some of us got to get desperate and say, God, if you don't help me, who will? Remember when Hezekiah, I think it was Hezekiah, when the, those four nations come up against him to fight him? He went to God and said, are you not the God of our forefathers? Are you not the God that did all of these miracles and get them out of Egypt? Are you not that God? He was desperate because if he didn't get desperate, it's going to kill him. So how desperate see us be? We too, some of us don't know how to fight. We got our sword down and say, come Jesus, come Satan, come. Come Satan, come. He come and take your head off. He come and take your head off. You don't hold that sword up and say, it is written. Come Satan, come. Know how you're calling Satan. Know how you're calling him. We are 
sons of God. We are joined as with Christ. Joined, we are joined to Jesus Christ. Our spirit is joined to his spirit. He is called the Lion of Judah. So we are in the Lion of Judah. So if we are in the Lion of Judah, what demon could come and get you out of him? What demon could come and talk to you louder than that lion in you? There should be none. There should be none. You got to learn to shut him down with the word. That's your sword. That's your sword. I went and I was in a drive through line and it was around the corner. When you around the corner, you know it long. Around the corner and I was like, oh, this I see. Anyway, I hope this don't take long. I said, I hope this don't take long. Well, one car, there was a big gap between the menu board and the pay board. You no, know, the pay window and the pickup window. So at the pickup window, there was, there was none to the pickup window. There was one to the paying window. And then the line really was from the one that was placing the order. So at the menu board. And all of us line up in the back. And so I watched the one went from the pay window to the pickup window. I said, no, devil. I said, you will not waste my time on this line. I blow that horn and I say, move. Get, let's go. Time wasting. I say, this time is being recorded. I say, I ain't wasting no time out here. Let me tell you, when I blow that horn and start to speak, that first car gone, that second one come, put the order in. I say, let's go. Keep it moving. But I could have choose to sit there and let them waste my time. And when that day of judgment come and say, 20 minutes, worship taking you two minutes? What happened? I'll go on here. That's 18 minutes you owe me. What did you do? Well, I was making the guess. Oh, if no. Uh-uh. He is writing. Angels are writing and recording. Because he said, your, your time you have to give an account for. And he said, your words will speak for you. Or they will speak against you on that day of judgment. Well, ain't no words will speak against Alvonia. Not words will come out of my mouth. So the words will come out of my mouth will speak for me in favor. So when we speak, make sure they're blessing and not cursing. Because he said, death and life, power of the tongue. Blessing and curse. So what is it that we're going to speak? Don't let Satan hijack your day. You know, I try to license my car. I've been down there all day. Why you been down there all day? Why you just shouldn't shut that down? When I go to license and inspect my car, I say, now, God, when I get there, I want pull, get inspected, pull up to the window, get served, and I want nobody in the front of me. And I thank you for Jesus' name, amen. Because you can go down there and waste, if not all your day, most of your day. So we have to know what to speak, and we speak life. We pray prayers that will move the hand of God. So we pray his words. So Jabez ended up being a blessed man because he said, oh, that thou wouldest bless me. So we can say, God, I thank you for your blessings on me because your spiritual blessings you've given to me in Christ Jesus before the foundation of the world. So I thank you for the blessings and you name them. He said, enlarge my coast. Keep your hand on me. Keep me from all evil. He said what he want God to bless him. But us, we uh, don't know what to pray. We don't know what we're asking for. So we have to make sure we speak success, we speak blessings, we speak prosperity, we keep giving God thanks for our health and for our wealth and riches because wealth and riches is for purpose. A lot of us want to do more for the kingdom of God, want to serve more, want to be able to um, see more people come into the kingdom. We want to be able to give more to those who are in need. And so, God, I thank you for wealth and riches in my house that I can better serve you, give to your kingdom, to enlarge your kingdom, to help grow your kingdom. And Father God, to help all that are in need and to give far greater. So we must have, we must have a need for it. Because if there's no need for what we're praying for, you're not going to see it. Because he said, and my God shall supply all your needs 
according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So what is the need that you have before God? If it's a need, surely he'll meet it. That's what he said to me, he said, one, as long as you have a need, I'll meet it. That's the scripture. And my God shall supply all your need. That's my God, that's your God, and he will supply all your needs. But you have to stand on that way, well, God, I need a home. This rent money, this mortgage money, I thank you that the mortgage is paid off now so I could do more. I thank you for this beautiful home that you've given to me. Father God, I thank you for the roof over my head, but God, this rent could be going to do more, to feed your children. Father God, I thank you that all of my debts are paid up. I repent for getting so heavy in debt, but God, I need your help to get me out so that my money is not so tight, so that I could do more for the kingdom. I could give more as you lay in my heart. What is your need? What is it that you have before God? Father God, my children have been around here too long now. They're going on too old. And they still ain't progressing in life. What is holding them back? What is keeping them stagnant? Why is the things aren't moving? This is how we intercede and help our family members. So we have to know how to come to God. Because he will answer. Don't have to worry about if he's going to answer. He truly will answer us. Let us do what men of men and women of old have done and were successful in it. Jesus being one of them. Let's turn to Genesis 32. Genesis 32. Genesis 32. We're going to read from 24. This is Jacob, 24 down to 30. Genesis 32, verses 25 through 30. Ready to read? And Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh, and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, Let me go, for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. And he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with God and with men, and hast prevailed. And Jacob asked him, and said, Tell me. I pray thee thy name. And he said, Wherefore is it that thou dost ask after my name? And he blessed him there. And Jacob called the name of that place Penim. For I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. Amen. So this is Jacob there desperate. He wrestled with God all night. He wrestled with God. Sometimes we have to wrestle with God. Come on, God. Been in this position for a long time. What's going on? Show me. God, I know you could do this for me. God, I believe in your word. We have to get desperate. We have to get desperate. Jacob, this was him. This was, he was making a journey. He was leaving his uncle, his crooked uncle Laban who he just got tired of always robbing and stealing from him. So he left his crooked brother, um, um, uncle, but now he is going to his tick-off brother. He ticked him off and he stole the boy right. He got the blessing. So he was really between what you call a rock and a hard place. Where could he go? Where could he go? He had already sent his family on, his, his, his wives, and, and, and his, all his belongings, so he had left alone. And so this is a desperate man. This is a desperate man. He can't go back from where he come from. And to move forward, he has to approach his brother, who he took off and who wanted to kill him. 
So he was before God and he wrestled with God. And it says, um, it said that, and when he saw that, and when he saw that he prevailed not against Jacob, he touched the hollow or he touched the hip, that's it, the hip joint is what he touched. And the hip joint came out of place. He wrestled with him. He couldn't, he couldn't defeat Jacob. Jacob was holding on for their life. He could not get, until he touched the, the joint in his hip bone. And it came out of joint, so now he could not slow him down. And he said, 26, and he said, let me go. Jacob said, no, brother. I didn't fight with you all night. For, he said, let me go for the day break it. And he said, I will not let you go until you bless me. This is how we have to, I tell you when I go to God, I come and I, I see myself holding on to Jesus, coming like the woman with the shoe block. I say, Jesus, no, nah, Jesus, you don't think I let you go. Jesus, this me, Jesus, help me. If you don't help me, I have nobody else. Who can help me? Let me tell you something, I cry out for help. I get desperate. When things in voice and God, we got to talk. Come, we got to come talk. You got to come talk with me today. You got to come talk to me tonight. Because God, I, I move in. I move in. This was Jacob's stance. Except thou bless me. He let him go. Now, the first person who can get their joint, knock out of place. They pain and pain. You think they still trying to hold on to the fight? No. They trying to go look for a doctor. He was determined not letting you go till you bless me. Not letting you go till you death bless me. And it says, 27, he said unto Jacob, what is thy name? Jacob said, Jacob. 28, and he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince, thou hast power with God and with men and has prevailed, overcome. And Jacob asked him and said, tell me, I pray thee, thy name and he said wherefore is, is that that thou knowest my name or why do you want to know my name and it says and he blessed him there so Jacob held on until God blessed him we gotta fight man we gotta fight see Christians believe once they get saved they stop fighting most people get saved because they come tired they tired of the devil beating them up so a lot of time, or they were scared into giving their life. Well, you're dead tonight, you're going to hell. And so, we put, in other words, some were pressured in serving, um, finding God, and then some came because they were desperate. But then they forget that, look here, you are a soldier, or they are not taught that they are a soldier, and that you must fight. We have to fight. We have to fight for growth, for change, for transformation, we have to fight for the word to know who we are. It is in the knowledge that we are delivered when we know. It is in our understanding that we get to tell Satan, sit small, you're under my feet. It is in knowing, it is in understanding. You have to get understanding. He said, he who asks wisdom, let him ask. And in your getting, Get understanding. Get understanding. When you get that, you you dare, you got it. It says, and he blessed him there. 30, and Jacob called the name of the place Peniel. For I have seen God face to face. I have seen God face to face. We have to get to the place where we don't let go of God until we see the blessings. And of course, he was able, he was successful. His brother did not harm him. His brother was so happy to see him. And he had gifts prepared for his brother Esau. Esau said, look, I'm a ready, a wealthy man. Where am I, what am I going to do with it? You say, you keep your stuff. He said, no, I'm going to bless you. But his life was spared. But when we go to, let's stay in 20 and 32, let's read 9. He prayed a prayer. Let's read 9 verses 9 through 11. 32 verse 9 through 11. Ready, read. And Jacob said, 
O God of my father Abraham, and God my father Isaac, the Lord send it unto me, return thou unto thy kindred, and I will deal with the dead. I am not worthy of the least of all the and of all the truth which thou hast shown unto thy servant. For with my staff I pass over this Jordan, and now I am become two bands. Deliver me, I pray thee, from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau, for I fear him, lest he come and smite me, and the mother of the children. Amen. So Jacob wasn't taking no chance. He took time and he prayed to God before he started his journey, before he left his uncle Laban. He took time and prepared his day. He went to God to find out what to do. And he started off saying that. Jacob said, O oh God of my father Abraham and God of my father Jacob, the Lord would send, send it unto me, return unto thine country. So who tell him to go back? God. So that means he went to God with his cause, his issues. He was being afflicted by his, um, by his uncle Laban. He was tired of being robbed. And he started to get more wealthy. In fact, he was more wealthy now than his uncle Laban. And so now he felt his life was being threatened by his, by his cousins, Laban's sons. And so he was now in fear of his life. And so he went to God and he goes, God, if you don't help me, this is it. And so God tell him, return to your country. Now, he could have said, now, God, this can't be God. This got to be the devil. Because Esau there, who was trying to kill me, this is how I get here now. But see, he didn't look at the situation, you know. He trusted God. If he didn't trust God, he would have never started his journey. He went to God with his troubles, the affliction that he's been afflicted. Laban was wrong. He did him plenty dirty, like they call it. He did plenty wrong to Jacob over and over. The, one of the first ones was when he didn't give him his wife after working for for seven long years. Even though he said it felt real short. He worked seven years for his wife. Laban gave him the next sister Leah. Now he didn't bargain. He didn't make or cut a contract to work for the sister. Leah wanted Rachel. So did him wrong there when he should have only worked seven years for the wife that he wanted. He worked seven. Seven to get the wife that he wanted. Rachel, love is the love of his life. So he was doing him wrong from then. He changed his wages over and over and over and over. So he was being afflicted by this uncle for years, many years. He had sons born there and they were grown now. So he was crying out to God because now God made him wealthy. Made him more wealthy than that same uncle. And so now he's in fear of his life. Prayed to God. He brought the cause to God. And God tell him, go back to your country. That was the prayer. Return unto thine country and unto thine kindred and I will deal well with thee. So this is where you have to trust God's word. That means if I say I can take care of you, I will take care of you. If I say I got your children, I have your children. This is why we cannot waver in our prayers. We cannot waver with the word. We cannot be double-minded. We cannot have plan B. When it comes to God, there's only plan A. And the plan A is his plans for us. Don't water it down. Don't change your mind. Just stay and go through. So when he prayed that prayer, that night he fought with God. He fought with God. But he held on until God blessed him. 
And so we are called the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Israel. What a blessing. What a blessing. Blessing of obedience. He was following what God tell him to do. A lot of us, we will follow God halfway. Halfway. We have to go all the way through. Because if God say he will deliver us from all afflictions, we have to trust his word that he will deliver us from all afflictions. That's every, everything that Satan may try to bring. All of them. So when it comes to God's word, believe it and speak it into your day. Speak it into your week. Speak it into that year. I declare from before 2023 started that this is going to be the best year of my life. And right on up to now, it has been the best year of my life. I spoke that. I spoke it. We spoke that. So if this life so far isn't the best, then you're going wrong somewhere. Either you stop believing it, forgot about it, and so we're looking at what Satan is doing more than we're standing on the word of God. Don't forget. Decree a thing and it shall be established. Decree a thing and it shall be established. That means you say it. But when you say it, you have to believe it. If it comes from you, you ain't going to believe that. God told me years ago, you could believe the prayers you pray. And then he said, why pray if you're not going to believe the prayers you pray? I said, oh God, that makes so much sense. You're wasting time if you're praying and you're going to believe it. And so when you come with your prayers saturated with the word of God, only the manifestation of your prayers will happen for you. But speak every day. Do not never get too busy to prepare your day, your week, your year. What do you want this week? What do you want God to do for you this week? What is it? You bring it before him. Father God, I thank you that this, this week, let me blow my mind this week in a good way, Father God. Or me. Show me you. Show me you. Turn this situation around. Show me that you got me. Show me that really when I pray, you answer me. Put him to the test. I just put him to the test now. I ain't gonna lie. I just do it to see what he can do. And let me tell you something. We sing that song. He has never failed me. No. Truly he's never failed me. When you see a quarter over a corner, trying to get over one corner, actually not trying, just got to the corner. That time it's busy, 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 busy. I say, Lord, I thank you for getting me out the corner and the car was coming all here, scratch. Stop to let me out. I say, thank you. <laughs> Most of the time, I, I do it to get a kick out. I, look, I just, just do it for fun. I just do it for fun. The car just do scratch and stop. Mind you, that car was going. And I just pray, Father, thank you for getting me out the corner. Scratch. And the next one, as this one stopped, the one to the left stop. I drove straight by. I say, thank you, pull my own. Boop, boop. Thank you, God. <laughs> Why stand there and just be cut? I tell you, I stop rowing people. I stop rowing the bad drivers. I say, you ain't taking me there no more. Mm -mm. No more. I stop it. And when you see me approaching the corner, Father, thank you. Get me on the corner. And I'm not on that corner a minute. I'm not on the corner for a couple of seconds. One day, I pull up in here, man, and I, and I forgot to, I couldn't reverse it. So I just pull in. Um, God, busy, busy, busy. I say, Holy Spirit, when I come down, when I come out, I want to come out easy. I don't want no stress. I just want to pull straight out. Let me tell you something. After we finish, and I only remember the prayers after I come on the road, clear. I pull straight out. I say, well, now, God, thank you. You ask. So this is how we live our life. We live our life, Father God, expecting to see good. We live our life expecting the blessings from God. We live our life to be prosperous. Not, will I have to see. Oh, I hope. Oh, I wish. No, 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 no. Your life has been predestined for good. Grab a hold of it. Don't let go of Jesus. 
Don't let go of the promises of God. If you are doing what he tell you to do, blessings have to come your way. Let's go back to book of Psalms. We're going back to 34. Go back to Psalm 34. We're going to read verse 14. So that's Psalm 34, verse 14. And verse 16. So that's 14 and 16. Ready, read? Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. 16. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil. To cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. So, God is telling us what to do. It says, depart from evil and do good. Depart from evil and do good. And he say, seek peace. Some of us, we can't wait to row. We go looking for people to row. That was me on the road. Seek peace and pursue peace. Speak peace in your home. Speak peace on your job. God, you say, I must seek peace. But I speak in peace and I send peace before me in my office, on my job. And I declare a spirit of peace throughout that establishment, throughout the workplace. Let there be peace. Let there be joy. Let there be fulfillment of happiness. Let there be joy unspeakable and full of glory. Lord, let this establishment feel and be full of the Holy Ghost presence. We have to speak. It says, seek peace and pursue it. So if he's a like, seeking, why we can't pray it? Instead of any getting, oh, tch, tch, tch. why are you going to let the devil cause you not to want to go to work? Cause you not to come home. Get out my house. You ain't going to stay there. I live there. Get out and stay out. Oh, I, ain't, I, can't, I can't deal with her today. I ain't going to work today. Oh, why call? And then you hang up the phone because you don't want to hear that person's voice. We got to get out beyond that. See, that's the devil now causing you to get angry, causing you to do evil. Depart from evil. Sometimes I look at the email and say, I deal with that. That above my pay grade. Die <laughs> for me. Holy Spirit say, answer the email. I say, God, die for me, man. And then I go, they make him three times more than me, ten times more than me. And that's they working. You tell me, answer that email. No, man, God, I can't do that, man. I ain't being nobody doormat, man. Answer the email, okay. What we saying? <laughs> See, we, we have to know when to just silent self. That's why flesh can't run the show. No. If no. flesh in charge, it keep us out of the goodness of God. So I go and I write the email saying, Holy Spirit, you got to write this email because if I write this email, it's saying, coming off right. <laughs> and so I don't respond until I know he's going to write it. And so I go to the point, so and I'm only for days and I was answering the email for days. For days. I had to repent because he say, depart from evil and do good. See, it's the and the do the good would just get you. So when you do the good, God can't help but bless us. And so now let's read 15. 15 says, The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open unto their cry. So God's ears are open only said to the cries of the righteous. I ain't seen nobody else there listed. He ain't saying nothing but them who do evil. But notice it, it, it's right between 14 and 16. I say, God, look who you put that in there. He say, for a reason. <laughs> Tell them twice about the, warn them twice about the evil. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil. So a lot of people pray and they can't see the, the manifestation because they're doing evil and not doing good. And so the, the, his eyes. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous. It said, not the unrighteous. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open unto their cry. So that means cry. Cry. Pray. If you're going through, cry. Pray. 
Do as, as Jacob did. Cry out to God. Did what Jabez did. Cry out to God. Pray. But don't sit there in silence. Don't sit there being silent. When the devil steals your voice, he's going to steal everything else. Because you have to declare. You have to pray. They prayed. They said to God. So we do the same thing. But we depart from evil and do good. Some of us, we just can't stand so and so and so. We just avoid them. But if that, like I said, if you still get a little stick when a name is called, or you come around them, or you see them, or you cut your eye, you do like this, or you get a stick, you ain't forgive that person. You ain't settle that yet. You got to go back and settle that. Until when you see them, you do you feel pity, pity for them? Or you feel joy when you see them? You don't know the difference. You truly will know the difference when you're at peace with someone. You get to the place and say, God, deliver them. Whatever they stay going through, save them, Father. Help them, oh God. I see that with my prayers. Now, the ones who did me wrong or Satan used to do me wrong, I find myself praying for them. So we have to get to the place where we do good all the time. And then it says, the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open to their cry. That's us. So we don't have to worry about God not hearing our prayers. He will hear our prayers when we cry and he will deliver us from all afflictions. So all we have to be is a doer of the word and believe his word. Amen? Amen. Father God, we give you thanks for your word this morning. Holy Spirit, we thank you for teaching us, enlightening us. And Lord, if, if we are doing evil unknowingly, God, we repent for doing all evil knowingly or unknowingly father god being selfish father god being un walking in unforgiveness god we repent forgive us lord you say we want to depart from evil and do good so lord as we depart from evil let us do good in the name of jesus god so that your eyes are on us the righteous for we are the righteousness of god in christ jesus that your eyes are on us the righteous your children and that your ears will be open to our cries when we come to you. So, Father God, show us, Father God, where we are doing evil. Father God, and Lord, if we're not doing enough good, increase our good that we do. Father God, that we get joy out of it doing good, Father God. That we become joyful, give us, Father God, in the name of Jesus. If we are not joyful, give us. God, teach us to believe your word, Father God to stand on your word, to speak your word. And Lord, you have given us to, what to do for our, to, to have successful, blessed, and prosperous days, Father God, wealth and riches, Father God, and health, Father God. You show us what to do. So God, show us how to prepare our days, our weeks, our months, not just for us, but all that you place in our hearts to bring in prayer to you to stand in the gap with Father God and to help them, Father God, see your hand move in their lives, Father God, in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we thank you, Father God, for this brand new week. And Lord, we declare, we speak, Father God, that whatever our hands touch shall prosper, Father God, in the name of Jesus. God, that you'll prosper us in our work, Father God. As we grant it a season, Father God, it will be, Father God, successful. For the entrepreneurs, Father God, I declare and decree success and prosperity over their businesses. New clients, new customers will walk through doors. Father God, that you will get all the glory and the honor. Their hands, Father God, will be prosperous as to everything that they touch. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I speak blessings over everyone in here. Father God, all the members of their God's voice ministry, I declare this week, Father God, this month of June, bless, prosperous, successful for us all, Father God, in every, in all of our endeavors, Father God, and that, Father God, spiritually, Father God, we, we grow deeper roots like never yet before, Father God, as we see the, your blessings, Father God, coming in our lives and truly adding no sorrow, Father God, as we bring our families, Father God, before you. Let this week, Father God, be a week where they see breakthroughs. As we see breakthroughs, give them breakthroughs, Father God. As our ways made prosperous, make their ways prosperous. Even our friends, our co-workers, Father God. As you, Father God, hear us when we cry. Hear, Father God, our cries also for them. 
Father God. And we thank you that our prayers are answered, Holy Spirit, as we prepare each day. Give us the words, the declaration, the decrees, the sayings that you have us to say, to pray, to declare, to decree for our days, for our months, for our years, not just for us, but for all that you lay in our heart to pray for, mighty God. And Lord, we trust your words. We stand on your most holy and precious words, for God, they are truth, Father God, as Jesus say, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So Father God, we thank you, God, for the truth. We thank you, Father God, for teaching us how to move, how to not to do evil, but to do good. And we thank you that our way is truly prosperous. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.